what a lovely day today. We're back with the latest Tazian news compilations, and here they are. The Thailand government pays attention for the chaos that occurred in Myanmar. A foreign minister spokesman says Thailand is deeply concerned about the chaos in neighboring Myanmar. As a next door neighbor, sharing a long common border with Myanmar and Thai people having close interaction in many aspects. Thailand continues to follow developments in Myanmar with much concern. As with other countries, we are saddened by the loss of lives and sufferings of the people of Myanmar due to escalating violence in the country. Thailand has seen demonstrations in recent weeks denouncing last month's military coup in Myanmar and deadly crackdown on protesters by security forces. There is also a large community of people from Myanmar living in Thailand. The United Nations Security Council condemned violence against protesters and urged the army to show restraint but failed to denounce the military takeover as coup or threatened further action due to opposition from China and Russia. Amnesty International accuses the army of using lethal forces against protesters and said many killings documented amounted to extrajudicial executions. Cambodia reports its first victim of coronavirus after two weeks of being positive for COVID-19. Cambodia reports its first death from the coronavirus amid its biggest COVID-19 outbreak. Cambodia reports a 50-year-old man become a victim of COVID-19 after testing positive less than two weeks ago. The health ministry said in a statement the man died in mid-morning on Thursday, local time, after he tested positive on February 27 and was a driver for a Chinese national who lived in the coastal town of Sihanoukville, who was also infected. So far, the Cambodia registered more than 100,000 coronavirus infections, has among the fewest cases in Asia, although a sharp rise in infections since February 20 has seen its overall tally more than double. The Southeast Asian nation of about 60 million people is located next to Laos, Thailand and Vietnam, which have all been successful in keeping coronavirus outbreaks under control. At least more than 20 people dead on Indonesia's school buses plunging into the ravine. Search and rescue personnel in Indonesia are evacuating victims of an ill-fated bus crashed which killed 27 people. The country's transportation ministry says the bus carrying school children and some parents returning from an excursion plunged into a ravine on an Indonesian island of Java at night and he adds that in this incident 27 people died and 39 others had survived. The search and rescue agency says in a statement that the driver of the bus lost control shortly before the crash in an area near the city of Sumedang in West Java province. Photographs from the scene shows the bus had ended up on its side with rescue workers trying to search for any more victims. Supriono, a local search and rescue agency official, says evacuation efforts had been completed and survivors taken to a nearby hospital. Myanmar youth group protests and demand democracy. A youth group in southwest Myanmar organizes a protest with no people using only placards and signs to call for the release of detainees, abolition of dictatorships, and a return to democracy. The Ayer Wadikaran Youth Seminar posted photographs of their protest on social media showing signs with the words mutual respect, equality and justice and we support civil disobedience movement filled a walkway in the city of Yangdong. According to an advocacy group, the people less protest comes as the death toll in protest against last month coup exceeded 80. The acting leader of Myanmar's parallel civilian government, Manwin Kaim Tan, who is on the run along with most senior officials from the ruling National League for Democracy Party, vows to pursue a revolution to overturn the junta in his first public address since the military takeover on February 1st. Thailand students burn law books to support protest leader imprisoned for royal insult. 
Talent students in Bangkok burn law books to show their support for protest leaders jailed for insulting the country's powerful monarchy. During the demonstration, some students are seeing lighting candles or offering flowers to the mother of one of the jailed leaders. Their lawyer says three talent protest leaders are jailed after the state prosecutor indicated 18 activists for sedition over anti-government rallies last year. The jail protesters awaiting trial had broken traditional taboos by criticizing King Mahavajira Rongkong, rising prosecution under a strict least majesty law that makes insulting or defaming the king, queen, heir, and regent punishable by up to 15 years in prison. The criminal court denied bail for Panusaya, Mike Rayong, and Pei Dao Ding, who faced charges of least majesty and 10 other offenses including sedition over September 19 protests near Bangkok's royal palace. One of their lawyers says the three deny all charges, but the court rejected their bail request on the grounds the culture of the trials were set for March 15. Thailand's youth movement has posed the biggest challenge so far to Prime Minister and former coup leader Prayut Chan Ocha, who they say engineered the rules of 2019 election to keep himself in power. Prayut's government rejects that protesters also say the constitution gives the king too much power and demand that some of it be curbed. The palace has declined to comment on the protest. Four other activist leaders are in jail awaiting trial over the September 19 protest, having been denied bail five times. Papua New Guinea pays tribute to Prime Minister Michael Somare in farewell at the State Cemetery. The disciplined forces, the correctional services, the John, he was the key figure. Thousands of Papua New Guineans gathered carrying flags and signs to pay respect to their Grand Chief at the state funeral for Michael Somare, the former Prime Minister who led the Pacific Archipelago to independence. Somare died on February 26 after he was diagnosed with late stage pancreatic cancer. He served as a leader four times and was the country's first Prime Minister after Papua New Guinea gained independence from Australia in 1975. Mourners piled into a sports stadium in the Papua New Guinea capital to see Sumare's casket. Mourners wear masks amid a surging count of coronavirus cases that is now testing the country's health facilities. Despite a contentious final term leading Papua New Guinea briefly in 2011, where both Somare and rival Peter O'Neill claimed to be Prime Minister, Papua New Guinea appeared united as the country farewelled the country's longest serving leader, knowing widely as the father of the nation. China arched Myanmar to stop violence after factory attacks in Myanmar. A foreign minister spokesman says China urges Myanmar to stop violence, protest Chinese companies and personnel after attacks on Chinese financed factories. China's state controlled tabloid Global Times says a total of 32 Chinese invested factories are vandalized in vicious attacks on Chinese companies in Yangon. Two Chinese employees have been injured and no fatalities have been reported, with property losses reaching 214 million yuan or 36.9 million US dollar. Global Times wrote in a post on its Twitter account citing the local Chinese embassy. Protesters in Myanmar took to the streets in defiance of the authorities, whose escalating use of violence resulted in dozens being killed in the bloodiest day since the February 1st coup. The worst of Sunday's bloodshed came in the Yangon suburb of Hanglei Taya, where security forces killed at least 37 protesters after arson attacks on the Chinese-owned factories. Victims' family hold funerals for protesters who die in the deadliest persecution since the coup in Myanmar. Families in Yangon hold funerals for protesters who died the day before in the deadliest crackdown since the last month coup against elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi. I'm <laughs> 
How brutal what they did to my son. I want to ask them face to face. If they have heart, don't they have children like I have? My heart is breaking. My heart is breaking. Why did you go to me? Min Kan Tsui, as well as 22-year-old Kang Piao Kiao, both died in Yangon suburbs. The worst of Sunday's bloodshed came in the Yangon, suburb of Lang Taya, where security forces killed at least 37 protesters after arson attacks on Chinese-owned factories. The latest deaths bring the toll from the protest to about 140, based on a tally by Right Groups Assistance Association for Political Prisoners and the latest report. Japan government will consider response to situation in Myanmar. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Katsunobu Kato, says the government is monitoring Myanmar's recent military coup and will consider how to respond to developments in the Southeast Asian country. Going forward, Japan will consider how to respond to the situation in Myanmar in terms of economic cooperation and policies by monitoring developments in the situation while taking into consideration responses from countries concerned. This remark comes after South Korea says it will suspend defense exchanges with Myanmar and ban arm exports to the country after the last month military coup and violent suppression of pro-democracy protest. Based on a tally by the Assistant Association for Political Prisoners that the latest death in Myanmar bring the toll from the protest to 140. Filipino artists recycle plastic waste into great paintings. Filipino artist Gilbert Angele transforming waste on a non-recyclable trash into painting worth up to few thousand dollars. Since 2019, the old artists make over two dozen such paintings, all of them make from a mix of shredded plastics, expired paint and leftover wood from demolished homes. These materials are sourced from around his neighborhood, or donated by contacts he has built since starting his campaign. Angela says he started his advocacy after reading a news article about the Philippines being among the top contributors of plastic waste, hoping his talents can somehow influence people to rethink how they get rid of or generate trash. na pala tayo na uh, contributor sa uh, ng plastic sa ocean. We are the third contributor of plastic waste into the ocean, the third in the world. When I found out about that, I had to think of ways to, to raise awareness and knowledge on the reasons why we contribute this waste. Uh, ano bang nagiging dahilan ba tayo nagko-contribute? His artworks have since been featured in upscale galleries, with paintings selling for about $600 to $3,000 depending on their size. A fraction of the proceeds will go to his recently established group, Green Arts. Angeles ads aim to spur artists into using recycled waste for their art pieces. According to the report of the environmental group Ocean Conservancy and the McKenzie Center for Business and Environment in 2017, the Philippines is among the top five marine plastic polluters in the world. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, please wash your hands and continue to maintain social distance rule. Do not forget to use your mask and bye.